What's up YouTube? This is about the seventh time I've tried recording this video and I'm getting tired of doing it in sections so I'm going to try and shoot this video start to finish in one chunk. So bear with me, I might ramble a little bit, I might make some mistakes, but what I'm going to do is try and teach you guys how you can start melting metal at home. Now it's actually a fairly simple process, although somewhat dangerous. The first thing that you need to get started melting metal at home is a furnace. While it's not absolutely necessary, you will have a lot more fun and a better experience melting metal with a furnace than say doing it over a campfire or doing it in your grill or something like that with charcoal or firewood. The furnace is basically uh, a steel shell lined with some kind of insulating material. There's a few different kinds. I prefer to use refractory cement for my furnaces. There are other things you can use to line it such as fire bricks or ceramic wool fibers. Um, I've also heard of you know people running furnaces even without refractory. A simple charcoal furnace can be made from a small steel bucket with a hair dryer, some straight tubing, and just a steel coffee can. I might make a video of doing that sometime down the road just to show you that it can be done fairly simply and cheaply, but for the time being I would like to just show you this furnace. So. There's the furnace. That's the first thing that you're going to need to get started melting metal. Um, the second thing that you're going to need is a crucible. And that is the container that holds the molten metal or the metal to be melted. This metal is also referred to as the charge. So if I use that term in any of my other videos, that's what a charge is. So the crucible should be made out of steel or clay graphite or some kind of high a material with a high melting temperature. You don't want to make your crucible out of aluminum because it's going to melt. You don't want to make it out of wood because it's going to burn. So steel, uh, clay graphite, ceramic crucibles, alumina crucibles, although those are extremely expensive and fairly small. Um, I prefer to make mine out of steel pipe because it's readily available. You can get it in just about any size that you want. And it's it doesn't react with aluminum and it's not going to melt under normal circumstances. Assuming that you use a thick enough piece. Now this one is about an eighth inch wall steel crucible. It's made out of a piece of six inch diameter pipe. It's about nine inches tall. And I would recommend going with thicker material for making your crucible out of for several reasons. Number one is that a thicker crucible is going to retain heat a lot better and transfer heat a lot better than a thin one. If you use something like a coffee can or some kind of a tin container, number one, there's going to be a lot of heat loss once you remove that from the furnace. The metal is going to start to cool off as soon as you take that out. Uh, number two is it's a lot more durable and a lot more safe because it's more durable. If you use a coffee can or you use a, a tin soup can, what's going to happen is you might get two or three melts out of it, but eventually it's going to burn through and it's going to cause a mess, either while it's heating up or when you go to take it out of the furnace, which is extremely dangerous because even if you only have two to three pounds of aluminum in there or less, once you pick that up and that container burns through, you've got that melted 13, 14, 1500 degree metal going wherever it wants to go. It's kind of like picking up a glass of water with a hole in the bottom. It's going to drip all over. It's going to damage concrete. It's 
going to leave sharp things that you can walk around and cut your feet on, not to mention it could drip onto your feet, causing burns. Molten metal is going to burn you before you realize that it hurts. So it can be dangerous, but as long as you take precautions, it's a lot of fun. Now, so we've covered the furnace, we've covered the crucible. The next thing that you're going to need is fuel. And what I prefer to use for fuel is propane. I've got a propane burner here. I would like to show you that. This is just a very simple burner that I made. Um, you can see it in another one of my videos as well. But this burner is basically an eight inch long piece of three quarter inch steel pipe. It has a three quarter inch to, or a one and a quarter to three quarter inch reducer on the end. And on the other end is the fuel pipe. This is just an eighth inch piece of steel pipe with a cap on the one end and a quarter to eighth inch reducer on the other. And there's a number 57 hole drilled on the other side of this pipe. That's where the fuel comes out. And there's three holes here on the side for air. And this setup is very nice because you don't need a blower. You don't need some kind of external forced air. This is naturally aspirated. So as soon as the fuel starts burning, it's going to draw its own air in there. It doesn't need an external air supply. So that's the burner. And if you'll notice on the furnace here, there is a hole cut inside. And the burner sits in there nicely. And if you look inside of the furnace, you'll see that the burner is contoured and so when the flame ignites, it's going to spiral around the outside of the crucible, heating it up evenly all the way around. I'll place the crucible inside the furnace here and you can see what I mean. There's a gap around the outside and once that starts burning, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, it's going to heat up all the way around the outside of the crucible from the bottom to the top. And once we put the lid on there, which is the other part I forgot to mention about building a furnace, is it definitely helps to have a lid because that helps retain some heat as well. Now, the hole on the lid looks fairly large, but if you get up in there and look at it, there's really not a whole lot of room around the top and the crucible itself helps kind of seal off the top. So I've had good luck with this furnace. I've melted about 15 pounds at once on several occasions using this setup that you see right here. So I'm going to turn off the camera, I'm going to hook up the propane and turn this burner on and we're going to melt some aluminum.